Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. We're going to take a trip. Well, virtually at least, and we, we enjoy these so much. Some of you have not been able to get on a plane in a while, but there are individuals out there that have still taken us around the world, around the world through the, the eyes of James Bond. And the latest and greatest version of this is on the tracks of 007 Italy. And I have the two gentlemen who have not only spearheaded this, not only have written, produced, and designed this, but they've got an adventure and a story to which you will not believe. I can't do it justice, so we're going to invite them on. Martin Mulder and Simon Firth, welcome to the show. Hey, David. Thank you very much indeed, David. How are you? I, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm, I, I have my seatbelts fastened. I've got my tray you know, all upright and my, my chair is upright as well. And I'm ready to travel with you. But gentlemen, let's start at the beginning. And any one of you can jump in here. You know, you've done a few of these wonderful, wonderful adventures that I call them. I don't even call them a, uh, uh, you know, a tourism type fodder. I actually call it an adventure book because you do take us on an adventure. Why Italy? What was the impetus? Well, uh, I'll take that one. Um, we had we had just um, uh, finished uh, Cote d'Azur, the previous book. Uh, I personally had had a a great working experience. It uh, it came out really really quickly, and I think we we just launched it. We just published it, and Martin and I were having a little WhatsApp chat, and he said, "So Simon, uh, what do you want to do next?" Uh, and I said, "Well, I have a couple of ideas, but I think really it's it's just got to be uh, Italy." And, and I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Martin, but I believe that at the time that we were talking, uh, someone actually uh, sent you a text saying, well, Coke Dessert is okay, but uh, when are you guys going to do Italy? Uh, so it was kind of, I think the, the writing was pretty much on the wall. So we went ahead and did it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so Mark, Mark, you know, you've done these on the tracks for so long. You have a, a very successful YouTube channel that you've immersed immersed the viewer, immersed the audience into this experience. Your relationship with Simon, and we're gonna pretend Simon's not even in the room anymore, uh, right. but your relationship with Simon, and he writes so poetically, but how important was it for you to really retain some of the things that you brought to the table with On The Tracks? Well, we had some discussions about it. And, uh, you know, the, the, the previous book, Cote d'Azur, was very much Simon's adventure in the south of France, and um, I tried to sneak in some uh, additional, uh, you know, uh, uh, location information, uh, but there were quite some discussions about it. Uh, but um, with Italy, uh, it was quite obvious that we needed much more about the locations, and 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 um, so Simon, uh, because at the time of Côte d'Azur, he had already sort of written the Côte d'Azur uh, text. Um, and for Italy, it was a, a, a work in progress, I suppose. So we, we um, talked about it a lot. And I think it, in the end, it turned out to be a very wonderful uh, tale uh, of Simon's adventures and, and the stories of the people behind the scenes. And added to that, uh, the, the location information. So it's become quite a special, uh, a special book. Yeah, and I think I think that's why it hits on so many different levels. I've talked to a lot of people that have written, or sorry, that have read and consumed this particular book, and I there's a different perspective with each person I talk to. It's it's almost like what you bring to the table. So some people are so grateful that you've identified the locations that they can go there themselves, hunt it out, or even plan their destination around it. Others, like myself, Simon found it enthralling because each one of these books seems to evolve over time. And this one, especially, you used a lot of people from behind the scenes of James Bond. Was that a very purposeful movement on your part? Actually, uh, it became purposeful. Uh, but to be honest, uh, I think when uh, when I was first given the opportunity of writing Italy, uh, quite naively, I thought that I was probably going to do pretty much exactly the same sort of things I had done with uh, the Cote d'Azur, albeit, of course, to uh, to make it a more complete uh, set of locations as opposed to me just waxing lyrical about uh, life in, in Villefranche, for example. And and at the point at which I had been given the uh, the project, uh, I was thinking, great, okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to plan myself a trip to uh, Cortina in March, go and see the snow, and then later in the year, I'll go and 
uh, plan a trip uh, in the summer to Materia in Sardinia and have a look around there and what could possibly go wrong. And then COVID hit. Uh, and I thought, well, initially, it's still going to be fine. This is going to last, what, two weeks? We can, we can still go ahead and do that. Uh, but then it became really, really apparent that this really was not going to happen. And so uh, I didn't want to just create a book which was just a long list of locations, you know, just something happens over there and something happens here. You know, it, it had to have something else. It had to have some, I think, personal connection. But if not mine, then whose? And I had a, uh, a quick chat with uh, uh, Gareth Owen, the personal assistant of the great man that was uh, Sir Roger Moore. And he said, well, you know, I can introduce you to a couple of people, uh, one of which was John Glenn. Uh, and that kind of gave me the confidence uh, and actually the impetus to actually make the book more about other people's experiences. And I think, to be honest, because they've all been related with the films and, and, and in most cases live in the country, uh, I think it is a far, far better book uh, for it, I believe. I, I would agree. And it's interesting, too. I'm kind of flipping to it right now. Obviously, there is the man i mean that that must have been such an incredible get for you i mean how was that dealing with him oh my god uh okay so i mean i'm i'm used to being the one uh, asking the questions and such like but i have to say and i and i know that you are used to uh, uh living in such company but for me this was the very first chap that i spoke to for this book and i i don't mind admitting that i was a little bit nervous uh, I said to John uh, Glenn when I uh, met him later that you know, he was directly responsible for the uh, cementing uh, of a, a foundation of an interest in, in James Bond. So I came to it uh, around about the time of Moonraker, but it was really when he took over the um, uh, the reins with Pure Eyes Only that uh, you know, the, the die was cast, uh, and uh, I, I did let him know that. But as, of course, as a result of that, then there was a bit of a you know meeting meeting your boyhood uh, boyhood heroes. And he was great. He was absolutely superb, bless him. All right, so so we've got to jump into something because Martin, we, we're uh, incidentally 007 minutes into this video right now. And we've got to come to the point where, um, you know, as, as a reader, as a consumer of these things, I love that there were anecdotes behind the scenes, but something happened very special for you. And I, for those that are under 30, um, in the olden days, when I was young, people would sit you down and you would have this carousel of pictures of your trips and you would watch them and you would pour yourself a stiff drink and you would show them. And I would like you two gentlemen to take us through a certain adventure that you had in the launching of this book. So uh, we're going to add something to the stream and uh, let's see if I can use some advanced technology to do this right. But uh, who, who is this gentleman right here? Right, so that that very very lovely gentleman uh, is a, a chap called Enzo Sisti. He uh, he's based in Rome. Uh, he was a location manager, production manager for uh, No Time to Die, and his work uh, took him to uh, obviously uh, Matera. So back when uh, Martin and I were talking about what the uh, what the uh, the launching and the promoting and the, the initial marketing might look like. Uh, he said, "Right, so Simon, we're gonna we're gonna go down to uh, Matera. Uh, we're going to uh, have an appointment with the uh, the mayor, uh, and we're going to uh, live stream an event." Uh, of us presenting a book to uh, to said mayor, and I said, "That sounds absolutely great, but you know, I should possibly get in touch with this chap that I interviewed for the book because um, his working relationship with the mayor." Uh, was at the time of uh, making uh, No Time to Die, was so successful uh, that the mayor uh, actually made him a uh, an honorary citizen uh, of Matera. So I thought, well, I'll get in touch with him. Uh, he will affect an introduction uh, for us to the mayor. It's better coming from him than just to complete unknowns. And he said, yep, great, um, but hang on a moment. Uh, I've got a bit of an idea, I'll get back to you. So unbeknown to me, not only was he uh, an honorary citizen uh, of Materia, but he had also been made uh, an honorary director of the Materia Film Festival. And so <clears throat> the email that we got back uh, was in fact introducing both Martin and I to, I think, three directors uh, of the film festival. And he said, we need to get these uh, guys some space. They're going to launch a book. Uh, and then before we knew it, <clears throat> we had a, a handler called Adelaide Defino who guided us into a material and then basically looked after us once we had, had arrived in material. And speaking of that, good segue, there is the beauty. 
Martin, when you when you go there and you see this type of view, I mean, what goes through your head? It was unbelievable. I, I, I've been to a lot of places uh, uh, around the world, but this was something special. And um, I took these photos. I think I, I was there a day or, or maybe uh, most of a day before Simon got there. So I just walked around there, and it was it was so pretty. And then, you know, when the, when the sun set and the lights started to come on, it was totally like you're in the movie with all these, it was, it was very magical. And the funny thing about this, you don't realize it, but it's actually, it's, it's houses uh, on a hill, on a, on a mountain. And so um, basically they were, they were originally, they were all uh, cave houses. They're all caves. Every house is a cave. And at some point, they just built an extension in front of it, making uh, the house lar the, the cave larger. Uh, so uh, wherever you you enter, you you first enter into sort of a house structure, and the more you go into the house, the, the more you walk into a cave. It's it's fascinating, but you don't see that from the outside. No, no, it's it's amazing. And and to your point, there is uh, my gosh, it takes on a totally different feeling. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. All right, it's one, well, one of, one, it's one of the oldest inhabited places in the world. Oh, is that right? Is that why they use it? I know that there's beyond Bond, uh, if you will. They used it for a lot of uh, Bible movies, right? As exactly. well. Exactly. I'm exactly. thinking uh, Passion of the Passion Christ. Of the Christ. I think that was the movie that uh, put it on, put Matera on right. the Hollywood map. Yeah. And speaking speaking of Hollywood, look at these two stars. What are you guys? Uh, where, where? What is this? And where is this? <laughs> We were uh, we were almost drunk here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now the, the funny thing is the funny thing is at, at some point Simon arrived and we 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 uh, just sat down on our on our balcony you know having a chat because the funny thing is we we had been working together for quite some time um, more than a year but we had never met each other face to face so Wait, this was what? actually the the first time we ever met so we. Um, we just had a i mean we we talked on zoom and and we called a lot oh but this gosh. was the first face to face meeting and we just <laughs> sat down and we we had a drink and we had a lovely chat and we had a great time that's amazing and then it's and then it started to rain <laughs> all right so, I, I could sense the rain aspect in here yeah <laughs> so we just uh moved backwards into the the what was it the hallway yeah sitting the very cozily together <laughs> <laughs> I swear, if you squint, when I first saw this picture, when I was pulling up the PowerPoint, um, it looked as though, and Simon, I'm going to fill your head up. It almost looks like Daniel Craig a little bit. <laughs> oh, God, you know what? I have I have had that a couple of times. Uh, I mean, I swear to God, I, I mean, I swear to God, I do not look like uh, Daniel Craig, but I, I did. I, I was in a, in a shopping center a, a number of years ago, at, at around about the time of Gusina Royale, in fact. Uh, and I bumped into a, a lady who was in the queue in, in, in the shop, and and she actually did a double take. Uh, and I said, wow. honestly, I swear to God, there's nothing to see here. Please <laughs> go about your day. <laughs> nothing to see here. Um, <laughs> but this is something to see. Talk to me about the Monkey Drink House. Is this where we started the uh, action? Uh, yes, pretty much. Well, I mean, it was still the uh, the same night. So. Uh, and material is really very very small. Um, that said, there are just so many streets and such like uh, that. I firmly imagine that you can't really i don't think you could actually live there for a year and uh and believe that you had actually walked through every single little tiny nook cranny alleyway street set of steps or anything they are just they're everywhere but the hotel that we were staying at uh the, the the first one uh was right next to the square that james bond lands his uh bike in uh in front of the uh, cathedral mm. uh we couldn't get a bottle of wine open uh, i basically just uh, grabbed the bottle of wine charged across the square looking for the first uh, bar that we could find to ask someone to do the necessary with the corkscrew but the first bar that i came to was in fact the monkey drink house and i, and I wrote about this in the book uh it became apparently so they say uh one of uh, daniel craig's favorite bars um in immaterial while he was filming there uh, and, and indeed there are various shots where actually daniel craig is seen climbing ladders and such like and signing his uh his name uh, on the ceiling 
but it was just surprising that really honestly just a hop skip and a jump away from uh, uh from where you're staying that, that this was the first bar that i came across and i just basically put it in for that uh, and you'll see images later on with um uh, the, the signature in the roof in the apex of the roof yeah as a matter of fact this is uh i guess this is the inside right here it is indeed yeah 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 so lovely 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 uh bar uh I, I firmly i think you're looking to go there uh, sometime later this year david uh, and i would firmly recommend going to have a, a couple of cocktails there uh, they are fantastic people and, and the cocktails are superb really really good by the way there's a nice picture i think i see daniel craig his signature and then who's that is that daniel craig signing yeah that is daniel craig signing it was the only i'm sorry apologies for the uh the quality of the image it was the only one i could find in uh in a hurry uh but yeah i, I thought it was a, uh, i thought it was a rain drenched simon firth signing <laughs> climbing something. buildings climbing buildings that's right making himself at home as usual yeah yeah Signing this is up. great this is wonderful and 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 obviously they're extremely proud they i mean that, are you getting that sense martin that you know, this is a group of people, a town that's proud of what they've done with Bond. Oh, absolutely. And they're they're very happy to have been in a Bond film. Uh, I mean, they're, like you said before, uh, they're, they're used to being in big Hollywood productions by now. But uh, they definitely cherish their, their Bond connection. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting, too, because, I mean, the natural beauty is one thing. The bond is another, it just enhances it. But you do get these wonderful shots that seem very Bondian. Who took, let's see if we can add this. Who took this shot? This is amazing. And what are we looking at? Yeah, well, I, I took that one. Uh, th that was the day before Simon arrived. And uh, this is the, th there's a large gorge uh, just right in front of Matera. And this is on the other side of the gorge. Uh, th it's. It's from inside a cave. Uh, they have cave uh, houses there. They have cave churches there, which is absolutely amazing. But this this is just the area where they filmed the, the where they made the graveyard, uh, which you, where where Vesper is buried, with the tombstones and the. Oh right. And uh, there's an image. I think the next one to this is this this grassy piece of land this is where they build the graveyard and this is exactly the, the 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 image that you see in the film with matera in the background and there's nothing left of the graveyard no remnants? absolutely nothing no i looked for it i i i, I looked for for you know pieces of rock or or i don't know what uh but there was nothing there yeah we um this this is nothing to do with this in the sense of just kind of eon and cleanup but um one of the things when i was talking to people of jamaica and they were talking about coco walk where they built daniel craig's house on a private property and they said that the cleanup took a week because they literally would have to go through and pick up every nail because right. every nail is a souvenir yeah. and so they had to go through and they had to comb it they had to rake it they had to comb it again and then they had a party of people almost like a search party how they walk a field to look for a lost child right. they literally have a group of people that walk through parallel lines like a grid to see if there's any debris left i would imagine they did it the same way here and now i'm wondering will all these people be in the end credits <laughs> the field walkers I'm curious field i could walkers. see that now what what are we looking at here well, this is an this is an image uh, um, that uh, you you won't recognize, but they they build a fake tunnel here. Oh. One of the first scenes in the film, you know, after the, they uh, they've been on the beach and and Madeline has had their her flashback. Uh, you can see them drive into Matera, and uh, the shot is actually from the other side, um, but they come through a tunnel, and that tunnel was just built here. Uh, and you wonder, I always think they insert everything digitally nowadays, but honestly, they, they build stuff as well and they just remove it afterwards. Amazing. Thank goodness it they is. do, because it makes these things so much more incredible. Yeah. This is when you look into the other side, the, uh, the opposite angle, uh, they, they see this. Yeah. Unbelievable. It, it, yes, you're absolutely right. I, I do find it absolutely amazing just how much uh, is built when 
it would be so uh, one would believe comparatively easy to um, pop a, a digital uh, correction and I mean, Lord knows they did enough of that anyway, uh, with the uh, the sighting of the uh, aqueduct, of which we'll talk later, uh, right next to uh, Matera. You know, it's interesting too because as I as I look at these and I see the physicality and the details of it, there's a lot of conversation right now in the bond community. Uh, bond twenty six. You know, of course, people are fickle; they're on to the next movie already. <laughs> but from a from an economy standpoint of making a movie in general and reaping. The revenue of it and the profitability of a movie there's all this discussion of will they finally go george lucas will they finally go digital you know do like the mandalorian and create a theater in the round and project right. a matera on it but then you see the sumptuousness of these locations and you go this is bond right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. totally agree and this, this is, is what this, this is what bond is is famous for exactly uh, now what, what, what is this right here so, um, so we were asked to uh, to meet uh, Adelaide Defino, uh for at around about lunchtime, or just before lunch, I think, uh, and she wanted to introduce us to uh, to the Casa Cava. So this is basically uh, the the frontage to the the Casa Cava venue, and it's exactly the same as uh, what uh, what Martin was describing earlier, whereby you have this sort of brick uh, brick frontage, but basically just behind that frontage, you then uh, descend into into a cave, which then once you're inside opens up sort of cathedral like uh, becomes this uh, this large large a uh, much larger uh, opening uh, through the small doorway My goodness. and it's all been uh, roughly hewn i don't know whether some of the walls have been uh, have been treated uh, but as we flick through the images uh, all of the uh, all of the steps and the stage and such like it's uh, they're all glass and you can see that the uh, they're all mounted onto the uh, cave floor and certainly the design of the cave or or or, or how the cave became a cave uh, certainly has some uh, attributes as to how all the, the seating is designed so it's it's really all over the place but it is just the most stunning venue i've never it, seen it, anything like it before it looks so high tech i mean i'm astounded it, it looks moonraker yes <laughs> yes oh my gosh you're absolutely right up i was thinking like where is like high tech meets ancient and that is moonraker yeah is this under the stage? And that's, yeah, I just basically took a picture under the stage just to uh, demonstrate exactly what I've just said, basically. I'm astounded. Is this is this kind of the uh, the walkway to get into it? And that's then, that is then looking out from the stage to the uh, to the entrance stroke exit, uh, the doorway that we saw uh, earlier. But it's it's absolutely stunning. So we met Adelaide, uh, Adelaide Defino, there, there she is. Uh, she wanted to uh, talk to us, she wanted to uh, get a few stories, uh, she wanted to uh, uh, meet us, uh, and basically to prepare herself really uh, for uh, what would become the uh, the later interview. Uh, have... but she was... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. That's okay, carry on. I was gonna say, um, so I wanna, I wanna get into both of your heads because obviously this is, an auspicious trip uh, around you in the world. No Time to Die is exploding with popularity and events, but to Matera as a city, um, and even the politicians, the mayor, are they very aware that you're there? Is this like a big event for them? Uh, I think so. I mean, as we track through the rest of this uh, this story, uh, I was uh, presented with um, uh, a, a timetable of all of the events that uh, they're uh, uh, Minister of Culture, I think, uh, and the mayor uh, were embarking upon uh, to to make use of the time during the uh, Matera Film Festival uh, and the, the the release of the uh, of the Bond film. So there was a lot going on already, uh, of which probably we are only a tiny part. Uh, mm -hmm. But they were really, really proud of the connection, and and they really went to town on it. It was very impressive. Love it. This looks very familiar. <laughs> Yep, indeed. So obviously, this is the uh, the walkway uh, going up to the uh, the wall uh, uh, to the left of which is the the square uh, that uh, Bond lands land his motorbike from his heavenly jump. Uh, and, uh, and some of the images within the book actually demonstrate that all of these stairs and all of these cobblestones uh, were lined first with uh, a, a plastic. Uh, and then uh, covered with uh, with concrete and smoothed over. Uh, a to obviously make it a, a, an easier trip for the bike, but also really just to protect the uh, uh, the stones. Amazing! Great jump. And that's the landing, isn't it? And that is the landing. Oh. Yes. And that's our in, our bed and breakfasts. Uh, oh no, kidding! In the middle, in the middle of the picture, the balcony you see that's that's 
the doorway that you see that's actually the doorway that we were in uh, in <laughs> in the picture together oh my gosh is there a cinema there is i see something marked as cinema yeah there is yeah. fantastic it's just that's a tiny cinema like a, a for for a, a smaller films but they, they also have a lot a quite a large cinema in in the center of the town yeah what do we have here this is the car chase uh, uh, ah. streets where, where they where they uh, the, the bonds uh, db5 is being chased by the, the the villains and when you're walking through these things i are you immediately i mean it's are you holding pictures up or you do you have video in front of you how are you making the the, t the ticks and ties uh, usually with with just photographs uh, printed out or, or, or uh, on the on the telephone or, um, and in this case I did have some video uh, very uh, uh, raw video material that showed some of the angles uh, pretty well so uh, I used that as well this isn't donut square is it no it is it is it is it is, it is so identifiable even without all the explosions <laughs> yeah and let me tell you as well uh the the stones in Matera, uh the cobblestones they are slippery uh, they are really really slippery so you're aware of the story about um uh i think it was reported that daniel craig but more likely someone else daniel craig reads better someone came up with the idea of sprinkling uh coca-cola all over the stones to create some grip and traction for the for the tires I swear to God, the number of times I, uh, I nearly came a cropper uh, sliding on the stones. Simon Firth, author, very nearly, but not quite, made it Ooh. to his own launch. <laughs> well, you almost launched yourself. Maybe uh, that's a tip to people visiting to wear like non-slip Vibram soles or something like that. Yeah, I, I went with I went with proper shoes, but in the end, I, I, I could not wear them. I had to wear something with grip. Oh, my gosh uh still the same no area so this is uh this is the uh the little tiny alleyway uh so behind that archway behind that uh house uh this is where towards the end of the chase uh james bond in his aston martin squeezes down a road uh scratches his car door against a wall uh careens down those steps uh and off and up to the right of the uh the road also filmed uh, was uh, a chasing motorbike and um, I think a Jaguar, uh, but they got clipped out of the uh, the end movie. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh. Celebrity right. sighting. Here we go. So yeah, we we got changed and we uh, we made it back to the Casa Cava. Uh, a couple of posters. Now I don't mind telling you, David, because I know that hardly anyone uh, will see this video. Uh, I was nervous. <laughs> I was very nervous. This is not my normal thing. Uh, I was looking for some support by Martin. I said, are you nervous? He said, absolutely not. I'm, I'm fine. No help to me whatsoever. <laughs> so I got on stage and I was, uh, and I was remembering the, uh, the, the thing that I believe actors do when they come to a, uh, to a, a, a new theater stage. And they make a point of uh, walking to the very front, to the very back, left and right, on all four corners uh, of a stage to basically own that environment. I took it one step further and I went into the audience, uh, the seats and such like, just to touch the walls and this, that and the other. I was pretty much calm until the point that they said, so Simon, we're going to do a sound and light check on you right now. So then they put these great big lights on me, gave me a bloody great big microphone. Right back to square one. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait yeah, a minute, you, you didn't do like Bond and take a, a shot or two? <laughs> I probably should have, but I'm not entirely sure that uh, that would have worked. Um, but but yeah. And you need to be sharp witted. By the way, I hope you snagged a ton of those posters around the the city. Uh, did you put some posters around the city, Martin? Well, uh, we 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 put up some posters. Yeah. No, no, no. Absolutely. I mean, like kept them as souvenirs. I mean, uh, we 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 made them. Ah, we, okay. we brought them. <laughs> I'm thinking like Matera went all out and put up these beautiful posters and you came with your own swag. I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's happening. Now, does this, is this, first of all, are you guys drinking martinis? Yep. So right. this was a, a nice little, uh, a nice little touch that uh, Adelaide uh, wanted to do. Uh, she wanted just a cocktail glass. So she had an assistant uh, run off into probably another bar and, and found a, uh, I found a couple of glasses. 
Not martini. Should have been martini. <clears throat> okay, it's not water. martini. It's water. This is yeah. set dressing. I love that. By the way, Mark, Mark Klein, you look like a model there. You look like you're from Milan with the, the, <laughs> the nice crisp shirt and the tan and everything. Look at this guy. Oh, jeez. So what, what's happening here? Tell us, you know, is it a Q&A? Are you describing the book? And by the way, we will link in, there is a video that I will link in um, on my Tynes, uh YouTube channel of this event so people can see it. But but kind of describe the moment and what's going on. So it was, it turned out to be, uh, I think, uh, it was a great experience in the end. Uh, so nerves notwithstanding, uh, Adelaide uh, said, look, guys, we're going to, uh, first of all, play uh, a little uh, seven minute video that uh, Martin had made, a very exciting little video, intercutting lots and lots of um, uh, Italian scenes from all of the movies. Uh, they, uh, she told us to to go and sit uh, in the audience, and then she would introduce us uh, from the audience, uh, and that gave me a chance just to uh, to turn around and introduce myself uh, and see what level of uh, English comprehension they had, mm. and uh, and just to see how how much more slowly one should um, modulate your uh, words to, I guess, make yourself understandable. Um, but in terms of then the uh, the, the talking, uh, she would just ask us uh, how did, how did the uh, the process of the, uh, the writing the book come to be? Uh, how did you enjoy it? Uh, what did you find more difficult? Uh, questions like, uh, what was your introduction to James Bond? My answer to which actually David is pretty much it's pretty much the same as as yours. There was a father involved. Uh, and so it was, I think it lasted about uh, an hour, and at the end of which uh, they um, uh, they had a, a few people come on stage and, and ask ask questions uh, directly. But it actually turned out to be a very relaxing and, and relaxed affair, and uh, and it was superb, really, really good. Nice. Yeah. Now, what? So is this picture right here after the event? Yeah. Is this when you can relax and have a drink? What What's going on in your heads? Oh gosh, I think uh, to be honest, uh, that previous hour then probably was wiped from my memory. Came back to me about a week later. You probably had to watch I, the video. I can't even remember when this photo was taken. I think it was taken at the at the film festival because I see these uh, things hanging around our necks, uh, lanyards. Oh uh, yes. Oh, it might have been. It might have been. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we're back to the beauty, but this. Now, now you have to explain this for people who watched the film and thought, oh, that bridge is connected to Matera. What do we have? Well, yeah. So I think uh, I think uh, uh, this bridge, this aqueduct, uh, it's uh, it's in Gravina, um, in Puglia. Uh, I think it's about 40 kilometers away. Uh, and uh, we wanted to spend a, a day there. But as it turned out, uh, because of our impending uh, presence here in Italy, uh, we were invited uh, to go and, uh, to another event uh, in the evening. So this was an event with the uh, the a similar set of people in terms of ministers of culture and uh, and mayors and such like, but uh, but over in in Gravina and 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 together with David and a couple of friends, we uh, we had a look around uh, the beauty of this amazing aqueduct. So in the in the distance there uh, again so this there in the distance on the horizon uh, there would have been another uh, s uh, location for the creation of uh, graves the graves were built in two locations one so that you could see the uh, uh, the background of material and uh, and in this case the uh, the foreground of uh, of the aqueduct that makes sense and of course here we've got the shot how much of this when you're standing on the bridge martine how much of this looks just like the movie versus well they clearly did a few things well they built uh an extra layer of wall um uh, on the on the right side of the of this image mm. just i suppose for protection um and um so that's basically the only thing they they changed you you can hardly uh see that I think also they they did add uh, some uh, some larger versions of these little bollards. Uh, so the mm. bollard, uh, the bollard behind right. which Bond uh, dives, they uh, they do exist, but uh, you can barely see them in this photograph. And uh, and for the purpose of the movie, they they did aggrandize those uh, those boulders. Right. So the other thing they added was, of course, the um, uh, all of the cables that uh, Bond uh, clutches. Oh, yeah, so right. none of those right. cables actually exist over the top of that uh, the wall that 
uh, Bond jumps over. Makes sense. That's a different point of view. Right. So the this uh, you you can actually get over the uh, the aqueduct, uh, so it's very very possible to uh, to go from uh, from left to right. But to be honest, the um, uh, the part that I was more interested in in having a look at were the uh, the was the area on the level below uh, where Bond uh, lands. So in the movie, uh, he uh, uh, takes off over the wall. He, he lands on the uh, the floor, uh, breaks the cable, uh, and then darts through one of those small uh, small doors. In the movie. Uh, you are led to believe that uh, there's a door on the other side of this uh, small mm -hmm. uh, doorway, uh, which then takes him into uh, underground tunnels and such like back in Matera. This actually, uh, you need if you need to, if you want to go down and visit uh, this area, you have to do a little bit of uh, mile breaking and entering. Uh, <laughs> there is a, there's, there's a wall of a certain height with uh, with a, a couple of gates, uh, but. Once you are down there, and people have been down there, I'm not too sure why that, uh, why they are locked off, or why they were mm. locked off at the point at the time that we were there. Uh, but yeah, if you go, if you go on the next uh, couple of slides, you'll see some closer shots of the, uh, uh, of that uh, those doorways. Ah, there they are. There's, there's actually a, a, a stair stairway walking, uh, going all the way down from from. Uh, uh, yeah, so it really, it really was just access to that stairway. Uh, once you'd, uh, right. once you breached the uh, uh, the access problem, uh, then the stairs is, is fine. It's very that's easy to get down and have a look at. Oh, that's a great shot. Love that. Epic, Heroic. epic chin Heroic. shot. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be. That should have been the uh, the author picture of this book. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe for another for another book yeah, called Arches or something <laughs> yeah. like that. <laughs> no, All the right, the we, funny, we, get, get the last thing about Grafina. The funny thing is that while we were standing there uh, at this this wall uh, that was like shoulder height, maybe not even shoulder height, and I was looking around, and Simon was was walking towards me, and he said, "What are you doing?" And I, and I, and I explained to him. I said. You know, you, we only have to go to the other side of the of this wall. And I was looking around and looking around, and suddenly I noticed that Simon wasn't even there anymore. And I'm like, "Where are you?" And Simon had already climbed the, the wall. Oh my gosh, he's an so he's, pretty, he's an adventurer. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. So what are we? Let's see here. Hold on. Wait for it. What are we looking at right here? So Other this is me. the uh, the evening event, and um, it uh, it was hosted in uh, I think a uh, a theatre or a, a sort of a local municipality building. Um, a, I, a, I, a, yeah, a museum like was thing. it a museum? Uh, and we were invited uh, by a lady called Angela DeMarco uh, to uh, to have a little question and answer uh, session. Uh, this though uh, was done uh, in Italian, uh, and the lady Angela, who was uh, was interviewing, was uh, had at the same time to uh, translate the questions and the answers back into Italian for the the sake of the uh, uh, the audience. Oh, that had to be. Uh, I'd never done that. That had to be kind of an intense thing because you've got to kind of wait, see the reaction, come back to it, etc. Well, what it did make, uh, at least for me, uh, it did make me focus the answers to be short, sharp, and sweet. Ah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Whoever heard of that? <laughs> That's a great <laughs> shot of you, too. I've got to say, actually, yes, yeah, so and Martin, uh, just uh, a point of interest for the, um, uh, the point of sale stuff. So this is all designed by Martin as well, these things that he took over from uh, home uh, to, uh, to Matera and Gravina. Uh, I've just beautifully designed little stands. The funny thing about these stands is that I had these two may, made uh, in, in the Netherlands, but I never realized that they would be too big to put in my suitcase. Uh, so I called the, the airline and I said, how, how can I bring these over? And they said, you can, you know, you, 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 they, they, we won't allow you uh, to do that. Okay. So uh, in the end, I had, to, I, I had to order two new ones to be made in Italy. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I'm so stupid. <laughs> well, you've got an extra set for your collecting room or something. Exactly. <laughs> Here's obviously the same discussion, or is it, no? It's different. Yeah, it's the same. It is the same. Yeah. Because your shirt was untucked in the last one, I tend to notice those little details, like if the cuffs <laughs> and collars match. 
Right. Oh, is that right? Okay. <laughs> it's a little things. Oh, 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 that's a nice shot. This lady. Uh, so I, uh, I, I think that she was the uh, the ministry cult, uh, minister of culture. Um, uh, gosh, she she was a, a fearsome and forthright young lady. Um, there was a point at which uh, a couple of gentlemen uh, perhaps were paying less attention to our fantastic words than uh, they should have been, and they were talking at the back of the room. Of course, this was a uh, an echoey room, uh, and so the, the sound kind of travelled. Uh, and this lady just basically turned around like a, a school teacher and told them to shut up. <laughs> it was just I love it, fierce. <laughs> it was it was incredible. So, and they and they shut up. They really did. They, they but, say yeah. Italians are very passionate both ways. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And this is the mayor, uh, the mayor of Gravina, to whom I was, ah. I was presenting one of the books. Very good. Did you meet the you meet the mayor of Matera? Uh, we'll get we'll get into that in a moment. The right. the, the thing with uh, Gravina is that that they I, I mean, Matera has a, 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 a natural stream of tourists because of the 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 whole ancient city uh, thing. Apart from the bond connection, they they get their uh, fair share of tourists. And Gravina is like forty kilometers away, and they they get they hardly get anyone. So they they were really looking for ways to to sort of cash in on the bond connection. And, and we, I, I remember having discussions with them. Uh, they, they asked us, you know, uh, how, how can we uh, benefit from this? What, what should we do? So um, it's, it's little, so I, 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 I remember emailing them examples uh, about the bridge, you know, that, that aqueduct, it's not really, it's an aqueduct. Right. Uh, they have all these, like they printed out papers of how to get to the aqueduct and they put, the, put it in a little plastic frame and they put it outside on the wall and it looks terrible and so i told them you know you have to make a make a big sign call it the james bond bridge and let guide everyone uh, the way to that bridge uh, there's so many small things you can do yeah. to do they have money to do that or that's the issue they don't <laughs> All right. Well, we need to uh, take a look at this. What do we have going on here? So um, this is the point at which uh, uh, Martin uh, had to leave to go home, uh, and uh, here on in, I was uh, I was I was alone. <clears throat> uh, what we have here is uh, that the point at which I had uh, asked Enzo to introduce us to the uh, the mayor um between the time of filming no time to die and uh, and present day uh, there had actually been a change of mayor and so we had the idea that we did want to make sure that both mayors uh, past and present um were uh, had a copy of the book so i uh, i went to go and see uh, enzo enzo sisti had arrived uh, in Matera on the saturday uh, and i said well let's go and let's go, let's have a drink and uh, he brought along his uh, his buddy, uh, the previous mayor. And, and to be honest, for the most part, I just sat and watched these two old gentlemen uh, clearly reminiscing about uh, times past. Clearly very, very good friends. Clearly absolutely uh, loved each other. Uh, and I, yeah, I just sat back and just watched these two Italian gentlemen uh, catching up. It was superb. So what we have there then is Enzo Sisti and uh, the, uh, the previous mayor. Got it. And then you kick the mayor out. Uh, kick the mayor out. <laughs> said, Come on. Glass of wine. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got stuff I got to drink. Yeah, you guys look exceedingly happy here. I think you've made a friend, clearly. Uh, you know what I said to I said to Enzo uh, when we were talking about uh, getting us down to uh, getting us down uh, to Matera, and in fact, probably actually uh, on that sofa there, I was saying, uh, Enzo, I pre I was probably a real pain in the ass when I was uh, writing the book because once I find someone. Um, I'm guilty of this. I'm sure other people are as well. Once I find someone who responds and responds well, uh, complete answers and quickly, I tend to go back to them probably more than I should. But this gentleman, uh, I, I did go back to him a number of times. He's, up, he's still working. He's 70 years of age. At this point, oh he was gosh. moving on to, um, I think, go to Sardinia to work on Little Mermaid, uh, the live action production uh, by Walt Disney. Uh, so he was still clearly very, very busy and still fielding questions from me. And I said, I'm really sorry that if I, I probably was a bit of a pain in the ass. He said, Simon, you were absolutely a pain in the ass, but let us stay in touch. 
Love it. Love it. Well, he, he's honest. You have an honest friend then. <laughs> at that. Right. Now, this, this looks much more official. Yep. So uh, this was uh, the, uh, the last uh, the last day of the promotions and such like uh, everyone had uh, my number and this lady here uh, to the right, um, Tiziana Doppido. Uh, she invited me at the very last moment to join a panel of guests uh, to talk about again no time to die this was one of the the many events that was occurring during that uh, <laughs> week or so uh, in Matera um, I had actually very little to do here uh, some of the questions were put to me in English they were translated by Tiziana to everyone else it was a live stream event uh, and uh, to the left of that shot is uh, outer shot is a is a camera feeding the uh, the live stream uh, and then uh, the rest of the panel was made up of the uh, the guy in the white shirt who is the the current mayor and uh, other people who were part of the uh, bond production and so they were being interviewed about oh. their time working on the production uh, here in, here there in Matera. now i heard i heard i don't know if it's rumor or just discussion or stories that the current mayor young obviously um is very much into doing something around tourism and bond but has anything been done about that or not so much? Well, I mean, uh, as you can see from that uh, timetable to uh, to the left, uh, there was a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I do follow some of these people. So the people that got us to Matera uh, uh, and I see lots of things that they pop up on Instagram, but they are in Italian and there are a lot of meetings going on. I, I, I hope that they are doing uh, good things for uh, the purposes of tourism. It's a beautiful, beautiful place and it deserves to be seen. Absolutely. And is this uh, where you stayed? <clears throat> so I had moved around a little bit. Uh, so with Martin, uh, we stayed at the uh, little uh, bed and breakfast. Um, I then went prior to staying at the Palazzo del Duca. I stayed one night at the Hotel Gattini. The Hotel Gattini is also on the same square uh, as the uh, the motorbike landing. Uh, and that was the uh, a beautiful five-star hotel that uh, the principal cast and crew stayed at. Uh, I stayed there one night. It was beautiful. I moved from there to this place, uh, the Palazzo del Duca. Uh, Palazzo del Duca is uh, very much a, a hotel within a cave. Uh, it sits on uh, Via Muro, uh, and it was used by the produ uh, bomb production team as uh, uh, changing rooms and makeup rooms uh, when uh, uh, Bond and uh, Madeline were doing the, uh, the slow walk up to their hotel and mm. this and that there, much of which has been cut out of the end moving. But here we see, obviously, uh, Carrie J. Fukunaga uh, in the in the lobby. So I stayed here for a couple of nights, uh, awaiting the arrival of my uh, partner to celebrate her birthday. Oh, very nice. Here we have the uh, uh, the dining room uh, again, uh, very much uh, all uh, roughly hewn out of uh, of rock, uh, beautifully lit. Uh, food is absolutely superb. Uh, superb. I would completely recommend staying uh, if you're there for a week in in both hotels. Absolutely beautiful. Oh. It's, it's fantastic. And there she is. And this this lady here is uh, Rosanna. Um, we're hoping to do some uh, some cross marketing uh, at some point. Um, she is uh, the lady with her husband who uh, owns and runs uh, the Palazzo del Duca. Absolutely lovely. Um, I'm so I'm so glad you set that straight because the way you were telling the story of awaiting your partner for the birthday, I thought that was her, and I'm like, oh, there <laughs> she is, and I'm like. Oh, and there's not her at all. And there's there's her present. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gets, exactly. It's a book. <laughs> so romantic, especially in Italy. Uh, <laughs> Here's my book <laughs> that I authored. I'll sign it if you want. <laughs> oh, look at that. Come on. Yep. So um, I... I, I made a point of uh, giving books to uh, just uh, some of the uh, the contributors. Uh, they they absolutely deserved it. Uh, most of which were Italian, but uh, but obviously I went to uh, uh, to go and see uh, John Glenn. And this was uh, around about. I think this was just after uh, we were coming out of COVID. Uh, he lives in uh, Henley on uh, Henley on Thames in the south of England uh, with his wife. Uh, and to be honest, uh, once I had been given the go-ahead to uh, to arrive at their house i honestly thought that i was going to be doing nothing more than just chucking him a book uh, across the driveway and uh, staying as far away from possible but absolutely not his his lovely wife came downstairs opened the door before i'd even got out of the car uh ushered me in uh, with invitations of uh, coffee and biscuits and, and to meet the great man himself john oh. glenn just heady stuff unbelievable 
Yes, it, it really, really was. Uh, and this gentleman is uh, John Fanner. Uh, he uh, was an art director uh, on a number of Bond films, all of uh, all of Roger Moore's. Uh, this man, God, he's uh, must be nearly eighty years old. A superb storyteller uh, with a most magnificent memory. Uh, he and I talked long and hard. Um, just a lovely, lovely chap. Amazing. And, and so, all right. So. One thing I want to say as an asterisk to everybody watching this is we're giving clearly a lot of attention to No Time to Die, a lot of time to Matera, because we're in the moment, right? We're still kind of in the, uh, I'll call it the afterglow of the latest Bond film. One thing that should be noted about this book is there are so many different locations. I mean, The Spy Who Loved Me, um, you've got so many things around uh, Quantum of Solace, one of strangely enough, my favorite films, um, you know, the, the stories in Siena about cranes and, you know, the different formats and what does it look like? And Daniel Craig coming there just to, you know, watch the Palazzo and, and all those things, they're in the book. So lest you think this is about no time to die, it really does travel the gamut of many, many, many generations of Bond, doesn't it? It really, really does, uh, and uh, and thanks for all uh, uh, those very kind words. I, I have to, I have to say, one of the questions, in fact, that I was asked um, uh, by Adelaide Defino uh, for the for the main uh, event, um, he said, "What? Well, how? How? How was it interviewing all of these people?" and and I said, to be honest, uh, it was absolutely superb. So imagine, if you will, that we were in the uh, the deepest, darkest depths of uh, lockdown. We couldn't even leave our front door without a hazmat suit and a hard hat. So we really were not going anywhere. And, and I was being introduced to, and I was talking to all of these uh, wonderful people, mostly Italian people, uh, over Zoom. And I was being afforded um, uh, insight into their places of work and uh, their, their, their homes. And so, and I say this advisedly, uh, for me, lockdown was actually a little bit of a holiday because, and a foreign holiday, because I was just talking to so many Italian people for so long. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, when I, I, I got the sense at some point that uh, I was beginning to hear some of the same stories twice, and, uh, and I realized that I had to abandon this interviewing process, otherwise I would just be uh, unnecessarily taking people's time up. And I had to go and see uh, my partner, Nula, and just sort of say, I'm, I'm going to have to stop this this process, and I, I found it really quite uh, emotional uh, that I was going to have to abandon it. And I was reminded of this uh, this uh, this interview by a couple of podcasters on the West Coast who have uh, this podcast called uh, LightTheFuse.com, uh, where they speak to literally everyone who has had anything to do with any of the Mission Impossible movies. And I think on their hundredth episode, they had managed to get Christopher McQuarrie uh, as an invite uh, as a as a guest, and uh, and the the two chaps they uh, they asked uh, Macquarie. So when exactly do you know that uh, a, a movie is finished? And he said, "Boys, uh, yeah, a movie is never finished. It is merely abandoned. Or in the case of a Tom Cruise movie, it's ripped from your hands. Clearly, no one was ripping this from my hands, but I realised that I had to abandon it. And it was tough. It really was tough to to leave that process alone. Yeah." Well, wow, that's it's it's an emotional journey. It's not just a when people think location, they think physicality, you know, something you can touch real. Um, but there's an emotional aspect to this. And I have to kind of point out something before my very last question, which is probably going to be maybe the most important. But before we do that, um, we are going to put a link down below to uh, this book right here. I've got a hardcover because I like it as a coffee table, but there is a paperback that you can kind of, uh, you know, have a little bit more flexibility with. Oh, look what I did. But there's <laughs> also a lot of other books and we'll put the links below. Japan, Thailand, Cote d'Azur, The Making of Honor Majesty's Secret Service with Martin is famous for now in the Bond community. If he does nothing else, he's brought us that. But here is my million dollar question, gentlemen. I wouldn't be a journalist, yeah, if I didn't ask this. This is a wonderful book. We're still drinking it in and celebrating. But what's next? What's what's a, what's the future for this group? Ooh. Well, the next project will be a book about the Bahamas. What? 
and it's not uh it's not like a guide to the bahamas because that might uh, be a, a, a very uh, small book but this is actually a book about the making of uh, or filming the james bond films in the bahamas mm -hmm. it is so much more than a a travel guide it's it's basically a, a behind the scenes look into the making of thunderball never say never again casino royale and all the other ones where they only filmed underwater. Uh, so it's a fantastic journey uh, through time. And Simon has been doing a great job writing a fantastic manuscript. And I'm currently uh, uh, finishing up with the, the, the doing the layout. Um, so hopefully in a few months, one or two months, uh, it will be available. That's amazing. And this is what I'm talking about. The Bahamas already is a beautiful escape. And that's what James Bond is. It's escapism. It's a wonderful escape yep. from kind of our everyday stresses in life to go there and, and, and enjoy it and create the experience. Add the layer of James Bond to that and you've got the most miraculous journey. Um, so I'm looking forward to this uh, and I'm sure you guys will find very creative ways to tell the world about this book. I would love to be the first to kind of get a glance at it, of course. I'll see if I see if I can speak to the authors about it. But um, gentlemen, this was incredible today. Thank you so much for spending the time, Simon and Martin. Thank you very much indeed for having us, David. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. It was my well, pleasure, Dave. Thanks. You're always wonderful guests and uh, you always take us for a ride. Some men don't like to be driven, but we like to be taken for a ride. <laughs> I've heard that in maybe Thunderball. Oh, look, we're bringing it right around. Anyway, I will let these two go because they have more adventures <clears throat> and more journeys to take and more things to write about. But in the meantime, this has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience, and we'll see you all very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.